Like, I'm about, like, I'm yes, let's get some women in this industry. It. Let's do this. But do I want Birds of Prey to happen? No. Because where you left Harley is just, oh, Warner Bros., just, just let me do your job. I'll do it ten times better. <laughs> yeah. oh. Still going to be Margot Robbie. That is 18-year-old, yeah. somewhat stable, <laughs> <laughs> ready to mingle. <laughs> <laughs> Mentally unstable and ready to mingle. <laughs> What's up, everybody? It's me, the Nerd Hero, and welcome back. Finally, we're back for the Talking Nerdy Podcast. We have been basically MIA for almost two months now. Uh, a lot of, well, not much has happened. I mean, Infinity War dropped. I don't really know if anybody saw that movie. Or, you know, Ready Player One, which was amazing. Deadpool dropped. I'm not sure how much of Deadpool we're going to be, talk, be talking about because certain people on the panel today have not seen Deadpool because they Come are, at me. they're not true fans i'm not your fan <gasps> i'm not committed enough <laughs> i am hurt i feel attacked listen so we're gonna get started right away there is no script today we are literally just off the cuff talking about all the news that's happened whatever we can really remember a lot of things have happened last few months last two months but i'm gonna introduce everybody first things first lexi will be joining us at least that's what she texted me <laughs> so she will be joining us as far as I know, uh, in about 15, 20 minutes. Uh, until then, we have Maria. She's back. Now legal, by the way. So, she hey. She turned 18, everybody. <laughs> this Finally. podcast is going to turn a whole different direction today. <laughs> we also have Sean. Everyone loves his voice. What? <laughs> What's up, everyone? What? It's a weird intro, but all right, let's do it. <laughs> Sean, I'm just saying, a lot of the women, including my own girlfriend, has said yes. Whoa. Sean. <laughs> all right. We also have Joseph. He's back. Marvelous Jokes is here. Yeah, the regular. Yeah, the regular the, who was he... on the show twice a year ago. <laughs> <laughs> we literally introduced him on the second viewing, on uh, second time on the show. He's going to be a regular. And then, like, a year later, exactly. he never shows up until just now. <laughs> Yeah, dude, that's how regulars work. And I mean, you, know you don't what? He film. He's still being paid monthly by us. Yes. He's being. Paid. Wait, we get paid? <laughs> no, don't worry <laughs> about it. <laughs> <laughs> only if, only if you're a regular, all right. <laughs> only you regulars get paid, like I've me. I've been on here more than you have. <laughs> hey, but are you a regular? No, I don't think so. So shut your mouth. I think we're gonna. Oh, oh. dude, she's eighteen <laughs> you know now. What? Relax. Yes, yeah, she she's legal. Oh like, God. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so let's get started. I mean, we have a word from our sponsors, Horror Hollywood and Geeks, GodHatesGeeks.com. Check them out in the description down below. They have all these latest comic movie news and reports and rumors all breaking daily. So check them out down below. Let's get started with basically, I mean, I well, guess we can on. just jump. What? What is it? So you say, you say we're not getting paid and yet we have sponsors, which implies that you're getting paid. Mm. Oh yeah, not just him. Hmm. So I feel like you're kind of holding out Henry on us. Henry Cavill, who? Hmm. <laughs> All right, so let's get started with <laughs> Avengers: Infinity War. Let's just jump right into ah. that because who needs an emotional breakdown today? Let's talk about that. I mean, I do. Let's do it. Let's talk about emotional breakdowns right now. Let's do this. Where do you begin, though? All right. So, honestly, <laughs> How about this? How about this? Ready? We'll start with this. Your reaction walking out of the theater on your first viewing. I'm gonna give it to Sean first because I already know Maria's. And it's going to be very, very <laughs> depressing. Let's go. <laughs> she was yeah, 18 so at the time. Yeah, right. <laughs> she was a Star Lord. Why? <laughs> no, stop. <laughs> no, right. for me though. No, I mean, wait up. Honestly, I'll give you the genuine gist of it. But let's let let's let him go first. <laughs> yeah, I mean, right. besides the dumb big smile that I had on my face, honestly, like my head was kind of spinning because there's a shit ton that happens, you know, in the film, um, and I couldn't applaud the Russo brothers more that they kind of balanced all those different characters out coming into it, I'm like how could you possibly do that you have all these different characters these different personalities how are they going to interact with each other and they pulled it off flawlessly I don't think I could have pictured it or, or seen it go any other way um, so just from like a high level perspective I was just super impressed with that um, but I mean there's just so many iconic and standout moments where you're like, oh my god, this is amazing, this is happening right now. Uh, just for example, you know, when you first see the Iron Spider come out, I was like, yes, this is what we've been waiting for. It looked beautiful. 
Um, what else? I mean, when they're fighting Thanos towards the the end of the film, and everyone's kind of gang ganging up and using their different powers, um, and the glove comes off. Just that little bit, and he grabs it. Then at the like the last possible second, and you're like, "Oh shit, this is going down now." I don't know. Like, there's like so much to talk about. I don't know where you want to begin, but it's just it, it was fantastic. All right, I'm gonna give it to Joseph for your initial reaction walking out of the theater. My initial reaction was I couldn't really take the death seriously because, uh, well, okay. So when they started fading away, I forget who died first, but you know, it's whatever. Bucky. Uh, but then when, what? Say again. Bucky. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> when Black Panther faded away, I just my mind went to okay. That's I can't I can't take this seriously because because they're missing out on all the toys. This is no place to die. Dies. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. <laughs> and then Spider Man died. <laughs> Oh, and then, and then, then I cried for um, you know, the remaining. What day is it? Okay, I'm. It's. I'm... <laughs> I wonder how many therapy sessions actually had to talk about this film. How many therapists were like this freaking movie? Well, again? okay, so it came out on the twenty seventh. It's now the twentieth. So we're almost going on uh, a month, a month. Uh, thirty. Thirty therapy sessions. <laughs> therapy sessions. <laughs> yeah, so right. that, you one more week. I'm going to give it over to Maria. She's going to have a lot to say on this one. So, <laughs> Honestly, ahead. you guys know me so well. Um, I've watched this movie four times in theaters. He's not a real fan. Not going to lie. You know what? Come at me. Um, but so initially when I walked in there, I took a picture. I was in my Star-Lord cosplay, you know, screwing it up, just like feeling good. I had gone with a diehard, my best friend Sandra, MCU fan, and a normal person who doesn't really know about it. So I got like the whole spectrum of emotions. But so when I walked out at the theater, my makeup was ruined. Um, I had so in the movie. Your star Lord makeup. Scenes, Does he wear a mask? When you, no, he does. But like I wore makeup. Okay, so back um, off. Mm-hmm. But um, eighteen now. The feminine mask. So, <laughs> so um, I was like the Gamora scene. She died, and I was already crying by then. I was pretty crying hard, and I had been crying throughout the whole movie. So I had been hyperventilating really, really bad. So at the at Star Lord's death scene, I guess my whole body was like, nope. I ran to a trash can and I threw up. I threw up really bad. It was a really like gnarly throw up. So oh, when I left, puke. yeah. But so when I left, I was nauseous. I was sobbing and I sobbed the whole forty five minutes home. And still sobbed when my mom asked me how the movie was. So it was really emotional. Did I believe it? Partly. I did, because I was just like, well, you know, they wouldn't just do this, but at the same time, I'm all like, well, they're they're coming back. They're coming back. But it was really emotional. All right. So I'm going to say it like this. For me, um, I did cry. Not a lot. It was more like I got, like, choked up. I got choked up when Spider-Man was going. That, because I think Mm. everybody was crying. Because even if you don't like superheroes, that's still a kid. Who is just trying to do what's right and he's dying. But at the same time, I don't think Tony could really blame himself for that one. Because he he could have been down on Earth still swinging around New York City. And he still would have been taken out most likely, you know? 50-50. But, um... That, the part that I actually felt like I actually cried was when the screen went black. And you see Marvel Studios... Avengers Infinity War with little piano version of the theme. Ah, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. And everything just that fades got me. away. That, I'm like, oh, I'm not okay now. <laughs> and uh, can we talk about the, the, what's it called? post credit scene. Ooh. post credit scene. Captain Marvel. I'm not going to lie, I forgot Captain what it was. Marvel. Oh, yeah. Captain Marvel insignia, yeah. Um, I it, had... I don't know what else to really talk about that. Yeah, what? yeah I, I, there's not much to talk about. It's just like, oh, she's going to be in the movies like like we already knew. She's coming. There's Three 50- people were I mean, like, what th- the fuck is this? There's a 50-50 chance that she's not taken out. <laughs> so <laughs> sending that out there. Yeah. Um, huh. I think, especially with Ant-Man and the Wasp coming out, which the trailers look great for that so far. We'll see how the villain is. They might just go back to their traditional villains in this one. I don't know. But Thanos, oh, yes. <laughs> oh, Thanos, but, good boy. My Josh Brolin. My Josh Brolin, yes. Thank Can't you. get enough Josh Brolin right now. 
But, this is a little weird too and if you want to talk about future movies we can come back to this at another time if you want but i mean with i think what spider-man 2 is going to be coming out a month or two after uh the second infinity war right yeah, yeah. The mm-hmm. adventures 4 so just from a marketing perspective that's going to pose a lot of issues like right because right? you usually have trailers or anything yeah. else a few months in advance so how are they going to do that without spoiling what's going to happen in Avengers, in, uh, 4. Avengers 4, Especially yeah. Especially that like... it was revealed that Spider-Man Homecoming 2, or as I like to call it, Spider-Man Prom Date, will <laughs> will be taking place minutes after Avengers 4. Yeah. Not to mention so... that Spider-Man Homecoming, Doctor Strange, and Civil War took place, and also Black Panther, took place two years before Avengers Infinity War, which means if he was a sophomore in high school in Spider-Man Homecoming, now he's a s- Senior. Senior. He's a senior now, and for wow. Jesus. almost legal. <laughs> I feel attacked, but yeah, that's crazy. Well, so, what is going to happen in Avengers Four? There's rumors that it's going to be a huge time jump. It's going to go to five years in the future, or something like that, which will explain why that girl huh. actress was cast as Scott Lang's daughter, but she's like in her teenage years now for not Ammon and the Wasp, but for Avengers Four. So, there's rumors about that. Hmm. There's rumors that Gwyneth Paltrow talked about. Tony and, her, and Pepper having a child now. Like, it, last, from last we saw, Tony and Nebula are stuck on Titan. But they do have the Guardian ship that they parked somewhere, I'm assuming. So that he can mm-hmm. get off the, the planet, the planet yeah. and ne- Nebula can drop him off or something. Can he fly a ship? No, Nebula Oh, can. she can. Nebula can. No, he can, but Nebula there. can. So, he, it's, it's, they're not really stranded. At first I thought they were stranded, but I forgot that the, the Guardian ship is still there. But, um, but well, that's not if it wasn't destroyed during the fight somehow. Uh, also, they would have shown it being destroyed. Or they would have shown it being thrown at the end. They would have shown something. Um, there was all the talk about the ways you could have defeated Thanos. I'm sorry. Yes, yeah, so you could have chopped off his hands using Doctor Strange's portal, but he saw 14 million 605 options of how the the everything would have ended. He, I'm sure he might have seen stuff like that. He chose the path, I'm assuming, that will cause all the stones to be destroyed in the end. Most likely. Yeah. It, Not just and being using... removed and taken somewhere else and then mankind gets the stones. Or Thanos returns again with, and gets the stones. And, like He saw different ways of getting it. This is the path he chose. This is the one true way of winning. I... Also, using that argument in Star-Lord's defense really quick for all you people coming at my Chris Pratt or my Star-Lord sideways if like I'm just doing this because my fangirl heart makes me but um if honestly if when you guys are judging like oh it's Star-Lord's fault a it's it's perfectly in his character with all the in the past movies we've seen him he's explosive he's reactive and that's just how he is the second point is, if Doctor Strange wanted to freeze him, or if Tony really wanted to stop him, he could have easily. It could have easily been avoided. But I feel like like um, Doctor Strange let it happen, because why? It was the only way. Because, yes, Doctor Strange probably saw thousands of ways where Peter Quill did not find out about Gamora until after, or that Peter Quill was able to control himself in different ways. But in, inevitably, in what, some one way or the other, it always ended up with Thanos or the stones being used and something bad happening regardless. So mm-hmm. this is the way it was supposed to happen. Now my question is, if he saw 14 million ways and said that there's only one way of winning, how much of that one way of winning did he tell everybody? Or did he tell everybody Nothing. pieces? Or tell Tony maybe the most because he needs Tony to live? He needed Tony. To, like, Why didn't they just give up the stone right in the beginning if they weren't going to just give it at the end? Because they needed Nebula there. They needed... To wait until Nebula arrived, so mm-hmm. that she would have the ship, and she could. They, so maybe Tony Stark could see that Thanos can bleed. Stuff like that was pointed out. Reasons why they needed to have that fight last as long as they did. Why they were trying to basically buy time for what was what was happening in Wakanda. Maybe if they didn't buy time, he would have shown up to Wakanda earlier. It would have just you know like all that kind of stuff going on. Thor, sweet rabbit. My Damn. <laughs> Damn. Now that is a man. That is a man. <laughs> He's a god. It's a pirate angel. <laughs> it's, like, it's like a pirate had sex with an angel. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Dave Bautista so, I... was on killing it as, as Drax this time. That oh why, why is Gamora thing? Why is improv, Gamora? Was improv. 
Oh. Also, Spidey's scene, Spidey's that scene was improv. What is up with these? Like, I know they're fantastic actors, but they gave so much into this movie that wasn't even scripted and made this movie like, like theirs. And it just it makes me so happy. They really makes it stand the out for sure. Yeah. And and to touch a little more on uh, Spider-Man's death scene, I was kind of mad that it lasted as long as it did because it's just kind of like uh, seemed like everybody else was going a lot like faster than he was, right? But that doesn't take into account because the Spidey Sony, sense. that's why Sony was like, no, no, like look longer. at his, his Spidey sense. I, that could have been that should have been the scariest moment, like because yeah. the Spidey sense, you know, is going off the chain his and he's going to die. Sense and he's telling him he something do wrong, anything about something's it. about to happen. Yeah. That's why he started reacting to it before it started. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He, he could sense something was happening, something bad was happening. His feet started to go. He fell on Tony Stark. Some people say that his regener- regenerative abilities, his healing factor, Spider-Man does uh-huh. have one, nowhere near as strong as Wolverine or Deadpool's <clears throat> baby legs. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but like, how would that even work? You would exactly. regenerate your your becoming dust? No. It's, it's X-Men 3 all over again, if you've seen that one. Yeah. yeah. Everyone's like, ugh. Unfortunately. <laughs> it's okay. Deadpool fixes everything, trust me. Anyway. But I'll, so I'll say this about uh, Thor, to go back to him. Uh, just the scene of them creating Stormbreaker. So I'm a huge, you know, mythology fan, you know, Greek, uh, Norse, all that stuff. But, it, like, just seeing that all kind of come together is, like, something out of, like, a, a, some, a mythology book, basically, or a tale or a story of how it's kind of forged. And I just thought yeah. that whole scene, that was a standout for me. Like, you that know, magic that mixed with happens. science and forgery. Yeah. Like they, they, made, they made it look reasonable as how it would work. And then you have You'll be killed. Yes, but handle, only if like, I die. <laughs> only if I die. They're going to try to... Yeah. Listen, um... The whole thing with Groot picking up Stormbreaker, right? And people are like, oh my god, is he worthy? That was nice. I'm like, I don't think that's, it's about wait, him being... Wait, what? Yeah, they're like, is, Stor- is Groot didn't... worthy? I haven't what? heard that. I've been seeing... No, I mean, Mjolnir seen... was... was. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Here's has the thing. the spell on Mjolnir, by... Mjolnir had the spell on it. Thornbreaker does not have the spell yeah, on it. Yeah, what? So I don't believe anybody should be able to pick up um, yeah. Stormbreaker. I like, even in the comics, Stormbreaker was made for Beta Ray Bill, not... Exactly. Uh, because, so... oh my god. Are you okay? I haven't heard you're sweating, anything you're on sweating. <laughs> His nerd starts coming out. It's getting real sweaty in here. Yeah. <laughs> How are you? Okay. I was supposed to be like, Honestly, are you expecting was, something from I was, me? I was expecting like an Old Spice commercial to start. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Very but yeah. is Thanos, like obviously in the movie, like they made him, he has emotions, he feels, but... Am I the only one who's seeing um, seeing Thanos have emotions made me hate him more? Like, mm. is that was mm-hmm. like that's how I feel. Like I saw that he had emotions and he did actually in somewhat way cared about Gamora, and it just made me hate him more. Like it's just like I hated you before, you purple grape, but now I hate you <laughs> some more. Grimace. <laughs> uh, because you you might have to to have hate means it needs to have some emotion attached to this character. He was showing emotion, which is why you are reacting to it more. The fact that now you have, like, you see the reasoning behind it. You can kind of understand where he's coming from, and you don't like that he is doing this and how he's affecting the people around him. And he's hurting the people in, a, in an emotional level that the ones that you care about. That's why. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it forces you to sympathize with him when you're I know, like, I'm well, like, I Dr. don't Phillip need to be sympathizing with this guy. He's a, he's a monster. <laughs> But at the same time, you can understand his motives, mm-hmm. which makes for a great character. And it's just—I oh. hate that purple grape. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> purple grape. Yeah. Okay. Purple let's grape. talk about that cameo of Red Skull out of nowhere. That was <laughs> nice. awesome. I was shook. I was that scene, shook. I remember literally the day before the movie comes out. <clears> I look at at the headline says directors talk about why Lady Death is not in the movie. I didn't read the article. I'm like, whatever. I was hoping for Hella, if anything, but I watched the movie right. and then they go to get on Volmir, which I don't know what the planet Volmir is. I'm sure it's a thing in the comics where something and something else happened and some character was doing something. But they go to this planet and then this Grim Reaper creature shows up and I'm like, I thought Lady Death wasn't in here. And I'm like, well, this is a male voice. Who is this? And then um, I have expected like a second Stanley cameo. <laughs> 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 because so I, no one would have expected talking. that. But then the moment so I do, I, up, I'm like, what? Yeah, 
I was so excited they brought him back. I, it was not Hugo Weaving. It was uh, another actor that mm. did. It, it was important that this actor did it. They did some other makeup on it. The voice wasn't exactly the same, but it was awesome to see that Red Skull came back for something. Because I knew he was never dead. I always knew he never died. And for some reason, yeah. I always thought that he would come back in the Avengers, like Avengers 3, Avengers 3. And I totally like disregarded that in my head. And then Avengers 3 came out and he was actually there. I am a prophet, yeah. people. I am telling you things. A prophet. <laughs> I, I have seen things. So when you first heard his voice, and like I, I didn't know actually until later that it was played by a different actor because when he first Me started neither. talking, I'm like I leaned over to my girlfriend. I'm like, that that's Red Skull. That's Agent Smith. It sounded exactly like him to me. And then you know he turns, he takes the hood off. I'm like, oh shit, it's actually him. Uh, but the, the voice is so on point that like, it, and he has a distinct kind of voice, like that mm -hmm. deep kind of growl, the the German accent there. Accent, yeah. I'm like, I'm like, that's that's Agent Smith. That's him. <laughs> no, it's not. So, I, knew, I, was like, oh. I knew immediately that it was not him after the initial yeah. shock of Red Skull. I'm like, Hugo mm -hmm. Wigan has discussed plenty of times how he hated doing For the sure. Red Skull thing. So I knew Marvel had basically always said, okay, you're out of your contract. It's fine. So when he showed up again, I'm like, that's not, that can't be Hugo Weaving. That can't. So I kind of saw through it as, as soon as my shock wore off. But I was so excited to see Red Skull back for something. Mm -hmm. um, little did Red Skull know that in like t 20 minutes, he'd be with Captain America. Well, not Red Skull, but Thanos would be facing Captain America. It's all connected, man. It's all connected. <laughs> <laughs> so, so how do you guys feel about the whole uh, Hulk situation? I was, I'm fine. I'm fine I was with pretty it. upset. I, 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 I one, didn't like that there there wasn't more Hulk, and two, didn't like that, I guess, I didn't like that they put Banner in the suit instead of somebody else that could have been in the suit or handled it better. I mean, Ooh. I guess for a comedic moment, but, like, why, why put Banner in the suit? Because he wants to help with fighting, and uh, I don't know. I I never yes. saw. I guess there was a scene that was cut that was in the trailer with him and, and Scarlet Witch standing next to each other, as yeah, they're talking in the suit was being was being delivered there or something. That's never in the film, so maybe in the deleted scene we'll get to see his reasoning why he wants to fight. Besides, he's an Avenger, I guess. I don't know, but um, yes. they talked about how Hulk, since they can't do his own solo movie, he will have his own three part arc in Thor Ragnarok, Avengers: Infinity War, and Avengers Four. The, the, so you saw what happened in, in uh, Avengers, I mean Thor Ragnarok, where it was mostly Hulk the whole time. Now you see it's mostly Banner this whole time, and they're having this back and forth. And some people say, why is Hulk scared? He should not be scared. That's not how Hulk is. It's not more than it's more than just being scared. I posted about this. I saw plenty of people do research on this. Hulk, and also in Thor Ragnarok, it gets pointed out. Hulk doesn't want to fight one because he just got his butt whooped. So maybe there is a little bit of fear in there. But two, he doesn't want to have to risk his life for the Avengers when he said in the Thor Ragnarok that the Avengers are Banner's friends, not Hulk's friends. All they want from Hulk is to fight. That's it. He wants to mm -hmm. live his own life, so he doesn't want to have to risk his life for people that don't care about him. So Ooh. now that he actually sees the mortality of facing Thanos, he doesn't want to have to risk his life for people that, he doesn't, that don't care about him. That's his reasoning behind it. And I mean, now I could sound. I, I, you could look at a Batman vs Superman fanboy who's talking about the Martha scene and, and saying the reason behind it. This could come across that way too. So I can see why people are upset at the fact that Hulk was scared. That's the end of the line. Is Hulk was scared? End of the line. Batman vs Superman. He, they're they're mama's boys. I mean, <laughs> there's a two dimensional way of looking at it and a three dimensional way of looking at it for both those films and a lot of other films as well. And that's end. That's the end of the class today, children. Make sure you do your homework later and turn it into my <laughs> email address. Thank you. <laughs> Sociology. All right. What's there else to talk about? Because we talked about uh, I mean, I got nothing for Infinity War. Deadpool. Anymore. We can't talk about Deadpool because we can talk a little bit about Deadpool. Okay, we guess we can do like a non-spoilers, really not breaking any of the jokes. But I already did my review on it, so if you guys want to talk about it, go ahead. Is Ryan Reynolds just, like does he like is he still hot because yeah please yeah good okay for a scene for a scene <laughs> well no he's like yeah he's a yeah yes oh fine, yes. in the movie yes, do yes. you see him as Ryan Reynolds like in like sh he wasn't shirtless when he was out of the the scars 
but you see right. him for one scene without the scars again. Yeah, flashback or whatever. Well, I still I found him. Well, this is gonna sound weird. Don't take it weird, but I still <laughs> find him like okay when he's all scarred up. Like he's he's a big guy. That's that's fair. Yeah, you really see his size yeah. when he's like just wearing a t-shirt. Yeah, and, like he's standing in the apartment, and I'm like, this guy's ripped. Like, and that's real muscle. That's like, they talk about who was it? Um, Ryan Reynolds, a four course meal. Was it okay? Yeah, uh, Josh Brolin was talking on a late night show, talking about how he looks at Ryan Reynolds in the suit, and he's like, "There's no muscle suit. That's all Ryan Reynolds." Then he said yeah. he went over to the set for Avengers: Infinity War, and he's looking at the guys. And he's like, "This is all muscle suits here." Of course, you look at Chris <laughs> Evans, who's ripped. You know, a lot of them are really. They're all really fit. But he, like in terms of size, when you watch Deadpool two, you see him in the the scenes where he's just wearing sweats and a t shirt in the apartment, and you really see yeah, his he's size. He's actually really tall and really muscular. When he's in the suit, standing next to like Josh Rowland and Kate and and Colossus, it kind of shrinks him down. But you kind of forget how muscular he really is. But uh, the f- movie was great. I love Deadpool two. It was just it was way more. It was more of the first film times ten. And does that Did you catch it- a Stanley cameo? No. Uh, no. He was painted no. on the side of a building. It's, it was kind of hard to see. It was like this big graffiti thing. Oh, okay. Oh. That's how so, I was. There you go. You know, Watch Stanley, out next time. If Stanley ever you know, <laughs> goes away, we, that's the only Stanley cameos we'll be getting. No, oh, stop. It, it also, why are you going to bring that stop. into why, this? Why are you talking? Why are you here? Why are you the way that you are? <laughs> what makes you the way that you are? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. I brought it. It got too real for a second there. It did. Okay. They're all, okay. They're all I can't sad. Face. <laughs> I can't Why do you think I'm into reality. comics? I'm into comics right. to forget reality. Don't bring it back. <laughs> hold on, hold on. So, Let's pause for a second. Let's get uh, Lexi in here. Come on, Lexi. Come on, come on, come on. Guys, my basement is so creepy on the side note. Uh, I hope you're okay um, with that creepy basement. <laughs> Lexi! Oh, Lexi! <laughs> Lexi's here, everybody. She joined us just in time as we were doing a non spoilers review of Deadpool 2. So, because Lexi, oh. get this Maria hasn't seen it either. Oh, gang, yeah. gang. So, you are not alone. You women wow. have joined the world of not seeing it. 125 million opening weekend from last wow. I saw. It could be a little more, a little less. It's around there. And you two girls haven't seen it. Because I'm seeing you know it what? on Monday, which is tomato, so I'll be good. And yes, I reference tomorrow as a tomato. Get over it. I, I support it. <laughs> Thank you. I wasn't going to say nothing. I wasn't going to say nothing. The comments I, actually yeah. will say <laughs> Let it go. <laughs> Let it go. <laughs> By the way, that frozen joke. <laughs> I was going to say, Papa, can you hear me? <laughs> <laughs> I was, uh, you girls, oh my you God. haven't seen the film. But, I'm sorry, but in Deadpool 2, when they even like, Papa can hear me, I'm like, and he goes, isn't this not familiar? I looked, I'm like, wait a minute. And I looked, at, I looked yes. at my girl next to me, and I'm like, do you want to build a snowman? <laughs> and my girl, I don't my, my girls, I'm sorry, I'm spoiling a joke for you girls. I'm sorry, you should have seen it. It's one you joke, you'll live, you'll live. Why don't you call me after your Deadpool review, and then, like, I'll come back. No, no, we're going nope, to stop but- real quick. But my girl, I, I, I would say this though. <laughs> I would say this before without spoiling anything. But the the post credit scenes, I Are was in nice. tears. I was oh crying hysterically. Yeah, Just and the writers no spoilers, confirmed think... the post credit scenes are canon. They happened. They happened, really. They're canon. Right. It's so weird. It's gonna ruin <laughs> everything. <laughs> Sorry. They are canon, and <laughs> thank God. <laughs> yeah, oh my Stay god. For the credit. Best, it's there's no end credit scene. There are mid credit scenes credit. right in the middle. Yeah, oh. multiple different scenes. And there's, so there's no the after end, the yeah, credits once it roll, ends, no. You can just go home. There's nothing at the end. It just goes to a black screen. Just don't. Yeah. But so those were, are, yeah. especially a certain one of the mid credit scenes was one of the best post credit scenes I've ever seen. Yeah. Oh. You know the one. You know the one. <laughs> well, actually, there were there were kind of two. Which, uh, the first one or the second one? The, fir- the first one. It's, yeah. It's, this is multiple scenes all just back to, it's, but you know, you know the first of the two that are like, yes. Yes. <laughs> but we first should really talk less about that. I mean, everybody was funny. The movie was great. The action was great. Uh-huh. Uh, a little, a little, um, predictable. But the funny thing is, even when it's predictable, Deadpool predicts it for you. He's like, 
foreshadowing. <laughs> like, it's like, oh, gosh. I love his breaking the fourth wall and just walking you through everything. It's great. Isn't it technically 16 walls? Yeah. <laughs> you know, one more thing is, like, um, so we know Jose can't do math, all right? <laughs> so, yeah, I, I really can't math. I can't math. <laughs> I, he, like, totally ignored it because he was like, I don't know. <laughs> do, do, do. <laughs> yeah, we were, it was bad. 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time is, like, 12 o'clock Pacific? <laughs> or is it? <laughs> it was so bad. I don't know my time zone, so that I don't was... even know either. <laughs> I'm sorry, all right? I mean, we've been doing this for a while. We've all been in the group chat for, like, a year, and they still get the time zones all messed up. Has it's, it been okay. a year? It's it's uh, like adding or subtracting three. You, you know how I know it's been a year? Because Eunice isn't here because of Ramadan, and this happened last time, like a year ago when we were doing this issue around this time. So, I, have fun, Eunice. Wait, have I been here in a year? Probably not. Mm, I, I don't think so. Less. Mm, yeah, I think I less. Yeah. Well, we've been doing the podcast for a while, so, I mean, you girls. You know what? Uh, you are part of the family of the Talking Nerdy family. You are we here. We are Regular. family. family. Do you feel like paying us then? I got you this. Uh, so, I mean, back to our like first sponsor. We are family. Nice. Mm -hmm. Okay, since we already finished talking about Infinity War, let's talk about just Lexi. What are your thoughts? Let's just get your, um, what was your initial reaction walking out of Infinity War? Let's get that back up right I thought it was like the greatest movie I'd ever seen in theaters. Ooh. I was like, what it was that? Mind you, I didn't get to see Lord of the Rings in theaters, um, which would probably have been my best. But somebody linked me to this boy. Um, oh, my gosh. Infinity War was just... <laughs> He's like, you're the typing. <laughs> it was just shocking for me. Mm. Like, oh, God, I just... It was so much. Are you okay? I feel Do you like need a moment? Do you need a moment? I did. I was definitely... It was like... You guys, I don't know. If any of you saw La La Land, you know the end happens really fast and that they don't give you any oh, room to, like, I love La La Land. Mm -hmm. So, like, that's kind of what happened here. Like, I was, like, you the, the, it, was, the it, was time to, <laughs> it was time to, like, stop crying, and I was still crying. So, I was, like, where's my comfort? And there was none. All right. Not even, like, baby Gamora could save me. I'm, gonna give, <laughs> I'm, gonna give, I'm actually going to cut you short so you don't even have time for that. Break down. I'm going to give you guys three topics, and you guys have to pick one to talk about. Okay, Marvel okay. Infinity War. No, I'm going to give you the Arrowverse on the CW about to bring in Batgirl. Uh, I'm going to give you Zombieland 2. Yes. And I'm going to give you... What? I didn't know this. Or... Lando Ooh. getting his own movie. Those are three topics. Pick one. Can we talk about Zombieland 2, please? That's one vote for Zombieland 2. <laughs> what? Well, there's not much to I talk about, like, though. Like, it's happening. Like <laughs> all of those things are really quick to talk about. Like, yeah. Exactly. So each one pick one, then. How about that? I'll talk oh, about like, Zombieland 2. Pick one? All right. So I'm going to go with Lexi. Zombieland 2. Go. That's not... Oh, okay. Um, I mean... I am Mar Mar no, <laughs> you know what? Because on my screen, it looked like Lexi said it. I'm sorry. Maria. I was like, uh, uh, hello, my name is <laughs> Maria, Zombieland 2, hit me um, with it. I just rewatched so Zombieland excited. 1, by the way, too. I just rewatched it. Um, with my brother, who's 21, that was one of the first movies I ever, like, really, like, related to my brother with it. You keep so bringing it's up just these kinda, ages. Yes, we know you're 18. No, oh that's, god. oh my god. <laughs> but it's one of the movies that I have, like, it's funny, it's just everything, and honestly, with his um, rule book, that's honestly, I do that to myself sometimes, I have my yes. own rule book, so I just, I love it, and I'm excited, and yay. I still use that rule book today, whenever I think about, like, <laughs> any video game I'm playing. Check the backseat. Check the back. I, when I play PUBG. Oh my god! I use that I, list. I if you that are, list. if you are like a girl, you uh, and anyone, if you are anyone, always check your back seat before getting into your car. I've like seen at some night, just, just seen do that. that. All right, I'm giving just it to freaking do that. Joseph. Pick one of the three. One of three. What? I'm not good at paying attention. All right, Sean, give me <laughs> one of three. Well, you already touched on Zombieland too. I mean, there's not much to say other than it's happening after ten years, which it, that kind of dates cast. myself. It's. Yeah, it is. Okay, cast. that was my question. Like, is it the same That's cast? Solid. Do they have new characters that they're introducing? Like, do we know anything more about it? Just original cast are coming back, and they're probably getting writers right now. That's all we got. That's about uh -oh. it. No director, no nothing. So, yeah. 
I mean, what else you want to talk about there? There's not much there. So with the Lando film. Wait, uh, wasn't think... it original director too? Whoa! I wait! Don't... Holy crap! You're cute. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually not I legal want yet. This video play. What? You're not legal? Oh, I'm sorry. I took that back. You're a child. <laughs> I'm a child. Wait, how old are you then? I'm how 17. are old? Are you? <laughs> okay, I'm legal in in like two weeks. Not allowed. Get him off. I heard legal like a oh, wait, week don't ago. Get him off. So. Can we go back to the Lando and Zombie Land thing? <laughs> we got Let's bring bridge. it back to the movie stuff. This is not freaking <laughs> Tinder. All right. Nobody got like so my funny humor joke. It's funny. <laughs> Talk nerdy to me. <laughs> Why is Lexi spiritually me? <laughs> I have to be someone. <laughs> All right, so Sean, talk about the Lando. Yeah, so uh, I mean, a lot of people are kind of surprised that that's happening, and a lot of people want other films to to take place. I'm excited. Prior I love this Donald which, so much. Yeah, so apparently he kind of carries this new film, which I don't think any of us see. Yet, obviously, since it comes out this week, right? So yeah. Um, but apparently he's kind of the shining star of that film, and I agree. I, I kind of wish they do other films first. I think they are still planning on, you know, hopefully doing the Obi Wan film prior to this. Oh, but yes. um, yeah, but I feel like if they go the direction where you know he's this original kind of smuggler, uh, kind of more in, uh, the underworld aspect of it, I think it'd be really cool. And I mean, he's got the clout right now. He's got everyone's. I mean, he's always kind of really uh, for the last probably ten years or so. Um, but I, to get his own film like that is huge. Lexi, do you have one of the three you want to talk about? Uh, um, yeah, I'm ready. Okay, so on the whole Lando thing, <clears throat> let's get back into this, into the groove. Like, I think it's cool, because I love Donald Glover. Um, I don't like saying his name, because I say it wrong, so I try to say it really fast. Donald um, Glover? It's like Clover, but with a G. You know what? Don't bother me. You're it's not 17. that hard. You're 17. Stop Go to school. Stop coming at Lexi sideways. <laughs> Yeah, come at me frontwards. Okay. Um, (laughs) uh, But I just, I think it's, I agree. I think they should do other films. I mean, didn't we just do the whole smuggler thing with Han Solo? I mean, I know there's the the underworld of it, which you said, Sean, but it's just, I would love to experience more of Star Wars. More of the universe that they have. I think everyone's missing the lightsaber battles, you know what I mean? Like, everyone's missing that. (laughs) Oh, heck yeah. Please give me more. Okay, and then, like, put comment on Zombieland, like, great, and then on <laughs> Arrowverse. I'm doing all three. Um, you cannot have baby. Okay, go. Okay. Well, <laughs> how about this? I'm gonna give three new subjects. Ready? Venom trailer. So, oh, wait, Random cool. what? The Venom trailer with the... Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm excited. <laughs> Sorry. I think it looks cool. <laughs> Okay. Or <laughs> Venom trailer, the Eternals film is being uh, done. I don't know and what that is. You will eventually. A lot of people are like, I don't know what that is. Or a rumor that the X-Men Dark Phoenix will be the final film for the Fox to be doing before the deal goes through with Disney. Unless Comcast buys it, which they're still in the bidding for some reason. What? Yeah, I, feel like I'm, I'm the only one who I don't doesn't. have any comments on any of that. Me neither. Uh, I mean, I do have it on Venom, but, like, I had no idea about the Fox thing. That's incredible. And kind Speaking of sad, of incredible, but... the Incredibles are out. We got a bunch of yes! toys. Yes! Yeah. Hey! My toilet paper has them on it. It's what? hysterical. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have a last Wait a girl minute. on my ass. Uh, let's talk about the Venom trailer. How is that doing for everybody? That looks great, huh? The I, I got Honestly, your first look at Venom, so, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's all we, we got. Venom. All right, Venom trailer looks good. <laughs> yeah. Looks good. Let's see how the film really turns out. I I hope it's good. It looks good. I like. I think it's gonna do well, but we'll see. Mm-hmm. We'll see. Put it this way: Have you seen a bad Tom Hardy film recently? You know what? No. <laughs> no. No. I like Locke. A lot of people didn't. He like is Locke. bald I like though. I wonder why he's bald they're right now. A, he's for uh, Al Capone. Al Capone. Film. Oh really? Yeah. Yeah, Fonzo. Whenever a superstar has a random haircut for some reason or a mustache, it's usually for a film. Well, I figured. Mm. That's why I said I wondered why he cut, like he shaved his head. Can we they're... talk about Ready Player One? No one's talked about it. Yes. Oh we talked about it last time. It was lit. We never talked about it because movie. we haven't recorded in like two months. Oh my gosh, it's really been that long? I loved have we that. Have about Black Panther yet or not? Yeah, we... Is that on a podcast? Have we? Yeah, yeah we have. Yeah. 
I'm pretty positive because I, I think that. I freaked out. But can I get like Sean's opinion on Wait, Ready Player we One? <laughs> well, I, I would like to get Jose's first because I mean, he this is the movie he's been waiting for for. All right, Jose, go. Yeah, well, I mean, it's, I've been waiting for it since middle of last he's year. What, he's <laughs> what he's waiting for since you saw so, the trailer. I mean, <laughs> since the first trailer came out, I read the book, and then once I read the book, I read it like three more oh, times. So you're one of those fake guys. fan. Why don't you read fake the fan, fan, fake, fake fan. fan. Yeah, yeah, hit me with it, or oh, whatever. And then I finally got to see the movie, and this movie was awesome. I loved it. I put my review up immediately. I can't stop talking about it. I can't wait to get this movie on Blu-ray. I'm going to be rewatching it so much and trying to find every Easter egg. There are Easter eggs that are, and I mean literally, not just the phrasing, but like blink and you miss it, Easter eggs. It's that yeah. fast. It really the, is. The, I, that's the why I think battle, you have to see that movie like multiple times. Uh, I still haven't found the Legend of like, Link and Zelda are in the final battle. I haven't found them. There's so what? many DC really? characters. The Gremlins oh, I saw are in them. there. You saw them? I did not. And my dude, Mecha Godzilla. I did not think they or would yeah. be able to pull off Mecha Godzilla. Like, there's no way they're gonna get the rights for that. There's no way. And dude, they did it. Plus the the, the ship Serenity. Oh uh, yeah. yeah. Mecha yeah, Godzilla Gundam. versus Gundam was just mm, was amazing. Perfect. And then when oh, when then when it came with Iron Giant versus Mecha Godzilla, I'm like, oh yeah. my I'm, God. I'm in tears. This is so beautiful. It was just awesome. Everything Iron Giant like was beautiful. I was so into about, Iron Giant. Does anybody talk about that ultimate Hadouken he did to finish the movie? Like exactly. Just, yeah. And that, that so combo cool. he did was straight from the game too. Like a legit True. certain combination gives you that fighting style, and then he does it ends up with a Hadouken. Like, yo, they got so deep in this film. There are references from movies that are movies and video games that are today. And then they go all the way back to like the seventies and sixties with the references. Like it's just nonstop. I, I literally on. couldn't believe all the references. Sorry to interrupt. I know, go back. Like, Robocop. I, mean, I saw Robocop right in the beginning. Uh, little shining scene. I kind of lost it. I was so happy. Yeah, it was. Perfect. Oh my gosh, I that was someone so complaining. good. Someone complaining like, why if it was just in the shining that nobody else ran into the second key? Because you need the first key to activate the second key. That's why yeah, all dude. of them yeah, had the yeah. first key. And that whole shining thing was great. I really. Again, I was so shocked that they actually went for a version of the going into a movie thing. That's what's in the <laughs> yeah, book. Yeah, well, in, in the books, book, it, was, right it was pretty different. But it was very I'm different, gonna... but the idea of still going into a film and living the film through your avatar was and the fact the that they went with that film too which is so psychologically messed up and it's just a horror film you're not thinking yeah. horror when you're going into this film you're like yep. oh, it was a complete when h was like screw it surprised. i'm gonna go for it when it comes to that the the <laughs> naked lady in the tub that turns into yeah. the that was so funny <laughs> they remade like, nope, so nope, many nope. iconic <laughs> moments from the original film and i was just like no when he said an artist that hates his creation and they're talking about movies i'm like the shining like i figured it out before the <laughs> film did because I know yeah. Stanley Kubrick made this film, but Stanley Stephen King hates the Shining film. So when I'm like the Shining, and then they show up like I'm like, no way! And he walked in. I'm like, this, is, <laughs> this is the hotel. The typewriter, all that stuff. My God. Oh yeah, the typewriter. Beautiful. With the keys. Oh my God. I love. And I'll just say one. too. And aside this... from the references, because you could have a film built on references and it wouldn't be as strong. But this was really like Halliday's story, and if you view it in that perspective, it's really. I would for lack of a better word, it's pretty deep and very emotional. And, you know, I was I found myself connecting more with him towards the end, too, and just understanding all the, the issues, turmoil, uh, just internal struggle that he went through on, like, a personality level that, I don't know, it really it got to me. And I, I got kind of emotional towards the end. I'm like, this, if, to see this guy who cares so much for his friend and couldn't really express it in any other way but then how he did it. He keeps very touch- autistic, doesn't he? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Um... At the end, do you believe that the avatar of James Halliday that you speak to in the end, not not the the wizard one, the the avatar, mm-hmm. was that actually Halliday? Did he put his consciousness into the game? Or yeah, was that, I think or, it's some form of his I think consciousness so. is there. Yeah, like a copy of yeah. his consciousness yeah, be might be actually there. That's what I kind of got out of it. Some people in other reviews said that that it wasn't meant to be like that, but I'm like, that's how I interpreted it. He's like, are you Halliday, or is Halliday really dead? And he goes, yes. But I'm like, well, that Halliday could be dead, but are you a living consciousness of Halliday in the game? Like, That would be interesting. That, that would be interesting, I It agree. wouldn't be far fetched from the version of the story that they just told, you know, like the, the technology that they have to do this stuff. 
and I mean the references. Can we go back to the references again? Because it was so. <laughs> good. Oh, right. I saw the gra- yo, Chucky. Oh, oh. I <laughs> love yes, I that. That was hysterical. It's fucking Chucky. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. My Lost favorite my mind. is flying Chucky. That's me. <laughs> I mean, the movie's not perfect though. We gotta talk about oh. the romance, cause. Oh. Now here, let me let me give you some idea of the story in the book, right? Because now that Sean's here, he can he can agree with me on some of the stuff. In the book, the first half of him and Artemis, it's really feels one sided to a degree until they start hanging out in the game. Only you don't meet Artemis in real life till the end of the book, but in the game they start hanging out and you start feeling there is a connection there, but you only see his side of it. So you see him like falling in love really quickly. Then they go to the dance, and he says it just like that. I love you, Artie. And then she freaks out because she's like, ah, I'm ugly. <laughs> and you don't really know me in real life, and we got to focus on fo- fighting the egg, and then they split off. Now, they had that moment in the... So I believe in the movie, when you see everything leading up to that dance, and he says it, I believe it's meant to be incredibly cringeworthy. Like, dude, you barely know this girl. That's what it's supposed yeah. to be like. But my problem is that they don't follow through with that. The next time, the next time you see them together, it's in real life because that's how the plot moves forward. And like then they're, they're totally like they're immediately hitting it all off. over yeah. each other. Like, oh, it was just you know, uh, like they're they're now they're in real life and now they're all over each other. Literally, they just met. Yeah. In real life, like, and then the next scene is them on the rooftop, and he you know does that thing over her hair with the yeah. earlobe, like, ear like he did in Zombieland. <laughs> like, like, what? Do that you thing just, with the earlobe. <laughs> you know, pushing a girl's hair over her ear. That was the whole thing in Zombieland. Romantic. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, touch my ear, baby. Yeah, touch my earlobe. Oh my god. Mm, thick. All right. <laughs> <laughs> she turns eighteen, and this is what happens, guys. Oh god. <laughs> that wasn't. Oh, what? You guys are getting confused with who's talking, but it's fine. That could be you. Yeah, this is a little tricky. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway. Two fem- so, is, what are your other thoughts on Ready Player One? Do you want to keep talking about something else? Um, keep talking about the movie. I haven't found the next subject yet. Well, uh, oh my gosh, were were you guys upset with how the challenges were different from the book, or what were your thoughts nope. on that? Nope. Okay, nope. I think that they did it in a really smart way. Not, I think. See, for me, I read the book like four years ago or something, and for me, watching it was watching the same story but told in a different way, and but with constant references to the book. Mm-hmm. And I feel like if if a movie tries to be exactly like the book, then and and somewhat achieves it, it just feels like a shorter, worse version of the book. Mm-hmm. And that was what I was worried about when going into the movie. I was worried that they would follow it like to the T, and there was so much in the book that it would just feel like a shorter, sped up, rushed version of it. Mm-hmm. Okay, and that's yeah. Uh, well, one of my things with the challenges and how they how they changed it, right? My biggest issue was going to be the first challenge, being that he's supposed to find it in the book yep. was unlooted by himself in a dungeon. So my thing is the core concept of that is that he figured it out while nobody else could, and he found it by himself making his yep. character anonymous so that's when it was like the True. first challenge is gonna be a race i'm like how is it gonna make him be able to find it without no it was a, some it? they say and some long lost gunter long forgotten gunter found it well found the the portal yeah the portal to which is what open happened up the in race. the book not exactly like that but another gunter found the first riddle in the puzzle in the in the well, it was everybody figured it out. It wasn't that hard to figure out. It but was just was notches. Nobody was talking about it, but one gunter right. spilled the beans, and then everybody found out about the first clue. Of well, no, the first clue be. they found out through the uh, indents in the letters in the almanac, which yes. a lot of gunters knew about. It was just common like knowledge that they were but there. Nobody was talking about it until this one guy went on TV and announced it, like, "Oh, I found it!" And then everybody praised him for like a month, and then uh-huh. nobody could find it anyway. Still, with that first clue being revealed inside the almanac yeah. that was given to the world so was a little was they kept little that concept that. in there Go where ahead. he's like somebody found the first clue and this portal opened up to this race that resets every hour or every day or every month whatever and um that's where it so he but basically he still they did it in the ways that he 
wins the race without anybody seeing him. He finds it and he figured it out going backwards. <laughs> when he said it wouldn't be fun to go backwards or go fast backwards or whatever, and he figures it out on his head, yeah. I'm like, does he have to go the whole race backwards? <laughs> <laughs> that's no, what I thought too. Was I was in a like, way wow, he kind of did, but I thought, but he actually just from the starting line drive backwards is what it was, and I'm like, oh, that makes a lot more sense. <laughs> <laughs> but oh uh, yeah, that was crazy, and th that race, the first time you see the race, is how that race was it is. nice, and you hear no music, it's just you just hear cars crashing, yeah, re re wheels turning, all that stuff. Could someone oh, said that was music to said my Luigi ears. Luigi was in there with the go kart, and I I've looked at that no so many way. times. I can't Luigi? believe it. I saw the car from vacation. I saw <laughs> obviously Akira, the Knight Rider thing on on the um on the DeLorean, uh some yeah. other cars from Mad Max, the original Mad Max, and a bunch of other cars. The Speed Racer, mm -hmm. oh, Mach Five, dude. If I was that was real, I'd be driving the Mach Five for sure. <laughs> It'd be over. The race is done. I'll jump right over um King Kong. Ain't got <laughs> King Kong ain't got nothing on me. <laughs> if you know that reference, you're cool. I guess I'm not cool. I guess you, you Sean, you know, know what else here. does? Yeah, it's training day. Come on. All right, then there we go. Denzel Washington. <laughs> oh, oh right. of course. Come on, guys. Nice case. case. <laughs> All right, I got another story for you. Men in Black. Tell me your story. Men in Black. It's gonna be with <laughs> with the Thor Ragnarok actors of Tessa Thompson and Chris Hemsworth. Hmm. Um. Mm -mm. Why? <laughs> exactly. I, agree. I thought Man in Black was fine. I agree Not worth a uh, uh, remake. I guess so. Just like if okay. it doesn't have Will Smith, I don't want it. All right, here's another. Story. I don't want it. Warner True. Brothers taps Ava DuVernay, who just did the one with the kids in Disney movie. What's it called? The, with the, the time, the Wrinkle in Time. Wrinkle and in Time. She's, oh. she's doing the new gods for DC as a film. Any thoughts? Yay! Uh, Yay. Uh, Come on, give me something. Give me something. Okay, I cool. I just, oh, I, think <laughs> I don't think about those. <laughs> I think you say any thoughts. No, I don't. <laughs> the Shazam has rap production. Any thoughts there? Nice. Yay! Can't wait. I mean, y yeah. I love. <laughs> Sherlock Holmes 3 is an early talks in development, which could mean. All right, really that nothing. is some exciting news. Yes. That, I'm like, heck yes. Mm -hmm. Let's go round three. Baby boo, whoop whoop. I love it. I just clearing up <laughs> after after Avengers four, so we'll see how that goes. But the you fact that what? Guy Ritchie might not be back to direct is kind of upsetting to me. Ah, oh, you know, that it is kind of his flavor all over it. That's What's his your film. Flavor? Right? <laughs> flavor, flavor. I'm here. All right. <laughs> I'm gonna give you one more story while I I still try to figure. It out. What's up with? Harley Quinn's being pitched as rated R? What's up with that? Oh, okay, cool. oh not Harley Quinn, but the Birds of Prey film. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, okay. why? Um, why? Ugh. TNA, I mean, guys, not, that's all I gotta say. <laughs> I guess, like, is... Would it, I'm not 100% against it. It's not like saying Spider-Man would well, be yeah, rated R. Well, yeah, you're probably gonna see, like, you know, woohoo. I mean, yeah, hey, honestly, Maria, you are 18 now. You can go see this. Absolutely. Oh, my God. You can go see R-rated motion Okay. Pictures. Um, but, <laughs> but Harley Quinn, I mean, Harley Quinn being an uncensored character overall, it makes Would sense, you... but am I excited for a Birds of Prey movie itself? Hell no. Like, I'm about, like, I'm yes, let's get some women in this industry, it. let's do this, but do I want Birds of Prey to happen? No, because where you left Harley is just, uh, Warner Bro, just, just let me do your job. I'll do it ten times better. <laughs> Uh, it's still gonna be Margot Robbie. That is eighteen year old, yeah. somewhat stable <laughs> woman and ready to mingle. <laughs> Mentally unstable and ready to mingle. Exactly. The Same. movie. So let me ask you this: uh, It's hear anything about um, you can do a film? Did anybody yeah. else hear his mic go weird? Yeah, yeah. yeah you, it's yeah. like yeah. it started After talking and then you just kind of started uh, walking away and in, into the distance. <laughs> it popped up. So, did you guys hear anything about the Aladdin film, the live action one? With uh, what news? Uh, I heard that it they're making it. I know Will okay. Smith is about genie, and they have the girl from Power Rangers as as Jasmine and some guy that's going to be the, the 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 dude Aladdin. Okay, <laughs> really, a guy. The dude. dude? That's cool. 
I love that guy. So they uh, they would drop this footage. bomb. Good. Please, don't. I do not like Disney. I don't like Disney movies. They're they're not mine. I I don't get them. Disney film. The Disney- First of all, my Disney girlfriend would, would would be crying right now. Secondly, Disney live action films recently, or just Disney the old ones, the, the old. No, animated- okay, the only old kid, like the ones that my generation supposedly like grew up on. I don't like they're good movies, but why do people go so crazy over them? Like they're not that big of a it's deal the because you were okay, at the and- end of the generation. All right, that wait, 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 hold on, hold on, so hold on. You, it's not big no. thing. Some of us, it <laughs> Can, was may I the speak? building blocks may of I life. Speak? Yes. Absolutely not. Hi, Jose Lexi. speaks way too much. Let me come in. It's kind um, of my show. You know. About it. You know how people say the they will say the exact same thing to us about superhero movies. So yes, you are allowed to not like them, but it's just like you can't be like, oh, why do people like them? Because everybody says that about every other film. Mm-hmm. And it's just like True. you gotta let those people love what they love. They can go be obsessive while we can be obsessive with our things and live in our obsession, uh, our obsessive <laughs> lives. Yep. Yeah, Let true. us just have those people who are obsessed with those. So how many times can I say obsessed? Too many. <laughs> You're kind of obsessed with saying obsessed. Hey, baby. It true. I miss Eunice. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Harass. Plot twist. <laughs> Not a plot twist. We all know I'm in love with him. <laughs> Aww, poor Eunice. He needs to. He the yeah, reason he's, he's not here. I don't know if I mentioned earlier is because he's uh, celebrating Ramadan, so he is not able to join us at the time we are recording this right now. So, plus it's he okay. Is, he he is not to eighteen, this so he is oh! under the the supervision of his parents. He's asked his parents permission before using the internet, like Disney Channel always told you. Just Speaking like of Ra- Ramadan, Kamala Khan has been confirmed for Captain Marvel. Whoa, let me go back for a Did second. Did you just say, here. speaking you of Ramadan. talk about what I was going to say. <laughs> I do just jump the gun. I saw an opening for a freaking good re- redirect. <laughs> but hold on. What were you going to say? What were you going to say? Uh, yeah, so it's gonna, I, I'm going to throw this out there because it's going to cause a lot of uh, controversy, I think. So you know Will you Smith go. is playing the genie in the new Aladdin yep. live action film, yeah, right? Yes. So I, they, they showed footage at uh, CinemaCon, which was like about two or three weeks ago. And so we got the first look of everything. And it. it it's apparently is that um will smith is going to be kind of just like a regular dude as the genie so he's not going to be blue he's not going to be big or cgi or anything like that at least Uh, that's the initial that we saw so it's basically just him being his right hand man as will smith so how do you guys feel i'm okay with that i feel like if they went and tried to do the whole robin williams look then it would feel like a disjustice to Robin Williams. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. I'm kind of like, I'm on your I'm 50-50. I agree with what you just said about not doing it, but at the same time, I also kind of like the idea of how it, con- it was before. Wait. See, so you guys so like, I'm blue, da boo dee boo doo da boo da boo dee da blue da boo dee Oh, yeah. I haven't heard that song in like 10 years. Wow. Yeah, well, the actual lyrics are, if I were green, I would die. I hope you know that. <laughs> yeah, but I would do with that is more. Yeah, da would do da would da. Wait, so like, um, but the Aladdin movie itself. This is just a clarifying question for me. Is gonna be based like in reality, right? Yeah, live it's action. gonna be live yeah. action. Like like yeah, the so Jungle like, Book movies. Okay, so that kind of makes sense. Well, like to me, it makes sense. Like why they're not going full out genie, but there should at yeah. least be some magical aspect. I'm sure he'll have sure magical sure aspect. I'm sure I mean, he'll like, he'll probably element. be able to, like, poof and fly and poof. Yeah. jazz hands. Hey, and can you I, I really hope they sing in this movie. Well, guys, I gotta go. My mom's gonna kill me for reasons I don't know. But Actually, I think I'm pretty much, we're all done with the podcast for today. I can actually yeah. close it out while you're still here. <laughs> yeah, I gotta go. We talked all about right, yeah. So, bye, Maria. Maria. I love bye. Maria. bye. Sorry. <laughs> bye. She's 18 years old. Oh. She's still got to answer to her mother. <laughs> Guys, I'm 20 and I still have to answer to my mother. <laughs> I'm 17 and I still, to this day, live with my parents. It's pretty sad. <laughs> Things are pretty tough out there huh, for you. Yeah. Man. Don, what about you? The hard knocks Me? life. And do you live with your parents? No. I know. No, I'm, 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 the, I'm the old fart here. It's <laughs> I know. I'm kidding. It's just it joke. Haha. Um, <laughs> I know I you're a man. My box. She's a goddamn angel. <laughs> <laughs> Put some respect okay. in her name. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so I'm actually going to end the podcast here. We talked about a bunch of stuff really, really quickly. I'm sure we missed a bunch. 
but we haven't recorded in like two months, so we have to really catch up on as much as possible. And the next podcast we do, we can start to slow down and talk about more detailed stuff. So that's the end of the show that we have for you guys today. Hope you guys enjoyed it. You can follow us all on social media. Joseph, where can people find you? Uh, it's going to be Marvelous Jokes. It's not that hard to spell. Uh, just if you if you can't ask your mom, dad, parent, you Some know, whatever, ask how to spell. Yeah, one, permission to use the internet first. That's really important. <laughs> and also how to spell the word Marvelous and then uh, how to spell the word joke. And then <laughs> S- the end. Jokes. Plural. It's plural. Plural. All right, Lexi, where can our fame, not famous, our wonderful people follow you? All six of them. <gasps> famous sorry. people? Oh, I'm still <laughs> laughing at Joseph. That was so good. Uh, you can find me, Darth Lexi, Lexi, oh, whoop. okay, Darth Lexi, Lexi. Spelled like that. Five. So how do you spell that? That, <laughs> oh, whoop. How, um, <laughs> are there any underscores or, um. Yeah, there's hashtag. like an, ah, whoop. Bye. Yeah, yeah. She sounds like a freaking yeah. Nutella tubby. Boop. Oh, guys, I can sound like so many things. My R2-D2 noise is phenomenal. She can sound like so many things. Wow, the way you said. So many things. I can sound like like so many things. I can do oh, a platypus sound from Perry the Platypus. Can you? Or you can die oh, and we end it now. Shut <laughs> I've, been, I've been practicing my wow. porg. I've been practicing my porg. Jeez. I'm crying. It's a miracle there's a woman that loves me in this world. All right. So, Sean, where can people follow you? <laughs> well, after all that, I mean, <laughs> you can follow me at uh, Updates in Cinema, not Updates in Film, not Updates in uh, Movies. We like to keep it classy, so it's Updates in Cinema. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that just reminds me of the, of the movie Entourage, where he's like, I'm not making a movie, I'm making a film. <laughs> if you guys have ever seen Entourage, you guys are one of my favorite people. Of course. If you guys have it, Jose, I can you do your porg again? <laughs> <laughs> I can do porg or stitch. Pick one now. Porg? porg. Both. Why not both? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good old-fashioned knee slap right there. Oh, that's... oh my gosh. All right, that's the end of the video. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe me on YouTube. And that's awesome. All right, all right. So that's the end of the Everybody's just making sounds at this point. We should have so ended it be... five minutes ago. So that's going to be the end of the podcast, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And as always, guys, remember... Oh, how long family? <laughs>